So dear chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to present our data of a real world experience with use of the double filter embolic cerebral protection device, the Sentinel device here. These data have been presented in February to the FDA and are now um, for the first time presented during an international congress uh, here um, in Chicago during TVT. So it's a great pleasure to, to report our experience with this device. There's no conflict of uh, interest. Uh, the data you will see now are uh, from a complete independent study. So what we do in Ulm, in Ulm we do a prospective data capturing of all Tarver patients. Ulm is a town in the south of Germany. And we do have a pre-procedural multi-slice CT in every patient. We perform our procedures with local anesthesia or conscious sedation, a hybrid cath lab. We define the outcomes according to the VARC2 criteria. And during the presented study period, there was no change in operators, technique, valve types, guide wires, or neurological assessment. And we started in the beginning of 2016 to use the double filter embolic protection device in every patient. And the rationale for this 100% cerebral protection was that uh, you have just seen that there's a, a, a high rate of new cerebral ischemic lesions on MRI up to 80, 90%. And in the end of 2015, we become aware of the data of the clean TAVI and the Mr. C trial showing that there was a reduction in lesion number and lesion volume when you use the Sentinel device. In addition, the histopathologic data uh, run by the group, uh, Rimani group, showed that in almost every patient there was debris in the filter. And of course, uh, you have seen that there is a high technical success rate and an ease of use reported. So that was the basis to start with a 100% cell protection in our TAVA patients. And this is a setting in Ulm. The radio access is standard for coronary angiography and coronary interventions. And the main operators performing TAVA is killed in coronary structural and even carotid interventions. So we talk about 802 patients undergoing transfemoral TAVA in a standardized procedure. We do have 522 patients starting in 2014 to January 2017 with unprotected procedure, and we do have 280 patients using the cerebral embolic protection device. And of those patients, we performed a propensity score matching, ending up with 560 patients with a seven days follow-up, 100% uh, seven days follow-up. And first of all, I will show you the data of the total group, and then the data of the propensity score match population. Here you see the total group. There were some slight differences. If you look at the SDS score, it was a little bit higher in the unprotected uh, group as compared to the protected group, 6.9 as compared to 6.2%. However, the other parameters, including atrial fibrillation, were similar. You see here the baseline data regarding the CT measurements, and uh, there was no difference regarding the diameter of the analysts derived by CT. There was no difference regarding aortic cusp calcification. There was a slight a trend towards a, a higher rate of um, <coughs> Babanti 2-3 classification in the AVOT in the group with protection. So for the total study population, there were some significant differences um, um, from the procedure. The used valve size, the mean used valve size was significantly larger in patients with protection, and this was based on a significant larger usage of the self-expandable valve during this period. However, there was no difference regarding um, contrast amount. These are the outcome data of the total population, 802 patients. Um, you see here the adjusted measures of effect for mortality or stroke <coughs> at seven days. It was 5.7% and was reduced to 2.1% with use of the Sentinel protection device. Odds ratio 0.30, 95% confidence interval 0.12 to 0.77 with a p-value of 0.01. In addition, you see a significant reduction of all stroke 4.2 to 1.4 percent with a p-value of 0.03 and you have just seen this um, sentinel endpoint which is the safety endpoint from the randomized sentinel trial which includes all cause mortality all stroke and acute uh, kidney injury stage 3 6.5 to 2.1 percent with a p-value of 0.19. So of those patients, we performed a propensity score matching using those variables, the SDS score, atrial fibrillation, 
classification at the aortic cusper LVRT, valve type, carotid artery stenosis, peripheral artery disease, gender diabetes mellitus, and renal insufficiency. And we end up with two times 280 patients. And you see now the baseline data, there were no differences. Atrial fibrillation was present in about one third of patients. You see the baseline CT measurements, no difference regarding area derived diameter, area perimeter, or the calcification at the aortic annulus or the LVOT. And um, in addition, we analyzed the device success. So in this period, starting in 2016 until January 2017, we had 305 tower procedures. And the oral success rate that both filters were in the intended position was 91.8%. And this number increased from 2016 to 2017 from 91.4 to 96.3% when we decided to use also the ulnar and brachial artery for usage of this protection device. And the reasons for not using the Sentinel device were that we did not have vascular access of the radial artery in 18 patients in the period 2016. There were some anatomic reasons which um, would not enable to use the protection device in six patients. And you see that the technical success rate was very high, 99.6%, which means that we had only one patient in which we used the device and could not deploy both filters at the intended position. So these are the procedural data, and again, this is a propensity score matching, with, uh, which shows some, some differences, uh, a significant larger valve size in the group with protection based on a significant higher usage of the self-expandable valve. On the other side, the Edward Sapien 3 was significantly more often used in the group without protection. These are the outcome data at seven days. And you see mortality or stroke from 6.8% significantly reduced to 2.1%, p-value 0.01 with chest seen from Axelinke. This is a 70% risk reduction. The odds ratio is 0.30, 95% confidence interval 0.12 to 0.77. In addition, the rate of disabling and non-disabling stroke was significantly reduced from 4.6 to 1.4%, p-value 0.03. And we have seen a trend, you've just seen that stroke has an impact on mortality. And we have seen a trend uh, towards a lower mortality rate with use of the Embolet protection device 2.9 as compared to 0.7%. If you look at the safety endpoint from the randomized Sentinel trial, you see now a significant reduction from 7.9% to 2.1% with a p-value of 0.01. We performed a multivariable analysis to see um, predictors for the occurrence of stroke or for the occurrence of mortality and stroke, and we were able to demonstrate that the uh, only predictor for stroke was not using the embolic protection device, and that the predictors for mortality and stroke were not using the embolic protection device or a high SDS score higher than eight. So there is no predictor for stroke, and I do agree with Axel Linke that all patients should be um, protected with the double filter embolic protection device. Uh, coming back to the total population, the 802 populations, you see here some subgroups on the left side. You see it for the overall population, the risk reduction from 5.7 to 2.1 percent, and you see that in, in, in every subgroup we analyzed, we have seen lower event rates in the group with use of the embolic protection device. Of course, we do have some limitations regarding our um, data. This is a single center study, uh, however, performed with well-experienced operators. It's not randomized. We do have a propensity score matching. It's a prospective data capturing. And we did not have a change in operators, technical issues like valve types use, neurological assessment. And so far, I know this is the largest population with use of the embryonic protection device in the setting of a tower procedure. So dear chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in summary, the use of the Claret Sentinel double filter embolic protection device is associated with a high technical success, 99%, significant lower rate of all stroke within seven days, and I haven't shown the data, but we have also seen a significant reduction of all stroke within 48 hours. It's also associated with a significant lower rate of mortality or stroke within seven days, and by multivariate analysis, the use of the double filter embolic protection device was the only significant predictor for patients being stroke-free within seven days, and in combination with a high SDS score, the only significant predictor for stroke-free survival within seven days. So thank you very much for your attention.